Hi everyone. I will continue with where I left in the last lecture. So I had given you these four problems and asked you to solve them. So I will I'll just give the solutions now. In the first problem if you look at it, uh, I have connected two voltage sources in parallel this problem. Uh, voltage sources in parallel so I am not violating Kirchhoff's voltage law. KVL is not violated. However, we know that for an ideal voltage source, uh, it can carry any amount of current and still maintain the same voltage. So therefore, this current here in this problem is undefined. I is undefined. So because it, it, it can have infinitely many solutions. Okay. And uh, so therefore, because it's an ideal voltage source, it can carry any current, whatever the current that was set in it, it can still maintain it. But normally, if as if I assume the metal wire connecting between these two terminals has a finite resistance then these two are equipotential points you know the voltage is same at both the points so therefore the current you can say that the current is zero if I assume finite metal resistance for the connecting uh, metal wires okay now the next thing is a circuit here the again these questions are designed to just test your understanding of ideal and current and voltage sources so in this circuit uh, you have two current sources connected in series of same value okay i cannot correct di correct different current sources because i, I would be violating kirchhoff's volt current law kcl so uh, as you as as i've already discussed in the last class that for electrostatic circuit kcl and kvl are valid you know is it's, it's they both are absolutely valid meaning at any node the current entering should be equal to current leaving only in radiating elements like antennas the current entering will not be equal to current leaving because the energy gets radiated there so here in a normal electrostatic circuit on the other hand the current that is entering should actually leave uh, 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 any node that you take any node in the circuit the current entering should leave the uh, should also leave the node uh, the entering and the leaving current should be same that's what kirchhoff's current law tells you now here if i assume the output node voltage is v out the voltage across this current source one the first current source is vx minus v out and the voltage across the second assuming this is um, i'm assuming this as a reference potential that this is that's why i've connected it to ground the voltage across this is v out now we know the def from the definition of ideal current source no matter what the voltage across it the current can be constant okay so again this voltage can be anything any value and still the current sources would give you constant current value so therefore again v out is undefined here uh, you can't define an exact value for it okay because they're ideal current sources but as I said, in a practical scenario, as we will see, if, if this, which, which I'll probably cover it in the fourth problem. So let me just go to the third one. Okay. So in this problem, I have just assumed fi uh, practical voltage sources with a finite source resistance. Uh, so when you assume finite source resistance, then the current will be zero because you know they are equipotential surfaces. These two voltages are of same value. So the current I can write the current in the circuit as V x minus V x upon two R s, which will be zero. Okay. So the current will be zero in this case. Okay. So now if I go to the fourth problem here, I have assumed the current source having a finite source resistance R S. Okay, as shown in this figure. Now when you assume a finite source resistance, then the value of V out will be exactly defined. Now how do I solve it? Uh, the presence of a resistance actually defines because resistance has a one-to-one -one mapping between voltage and current. For every uh, because it's unique mapping. I mean, if you if, if the voltage across resistance is fixed, then the current is also fixed. So that's that has a one to one mapping. Whereas the voltage source and current source they have many to one mapping. So for an ideal current source, it can have any voltage and still the current is same. Okay, but for a resistor, it's a one to one mapped element. So any you know for for a given voltage, the current is also fixed. So therefore, uh, if I if if I ask you to find the voltage at at V out how can you find it the current entering this node is i x so when it enter then let's assume there is some current flowing through r s then the current leaving through this node is i x so you might as well treat the current flowing through the upper source resistance will also flow through the lower source resistance because you know their identity ide ideal current sources uh, KCL should be valid so i can just to find the voltage v out i can ignore uh, i x altogether and assume this is r s and this is r s and this is v x so the voltage here would be simply Vx by 2. It's a simple voltage division and your V out will be Vx by 2. Okay. So these problems are just to make you understand about practical and ideal, ideal and uh, practical voltage and current sources. So very briefly, just to brush up what we discussed in the last class. So we, we covered what we call finite power sources 
meaning uh, I assumed a voltage source uh, when it is modeled with a finite source resistance okay it restricts or limits the maximum power it can deliver to a load okay if I connect an ideal voltage source to a load in theory it can deliver infinite power if the load resistance is negligibly small then you can deliver a lot of power to the load resistance by modeling a finite source resistance with a load I am restricting the maximum power that this voltage source can deliver okay that is what we discussed and we also discussed another point that uh, you know not only that uh, even even for a finite we discussed the concept of finite energy and uh, finite power so I discussed that you can have a source which has a finite energy but still it can deliver infinite power okay so if energy is finite so but it can deliver all the power in no time you know for example assume energy is finite I can have power to be an impulse function I can assume power can be an impulse function I know those who have done engineering would be aware what an impulse function is at least second year of engineering an impulse function is also called Dirac delta function which exists for no time but still it a, its area is finite okay if I have any bounded function any any finite valued function uh, if it exists for no time then the area has to be zero but an impulse function exists for no time but uh, it can it can its its integral the value of the integral of an impulse function is finite and equal to one over all time but if you find its value at any time it is it is zero for no at t not equal to zero okay so definitely that this is what I what I have written here is the definition of an impulse function so it exists so I, I can have an impulse of power impulse of power delivered in no time you know I can do that even, even though the energy is finite okay energy is integral of power integral of power I can have a finite energy but still power can be infinite now modeling the source resistance in an ideal voltage source uh, helps you in describing voltage sources or mathematically describing voltage sources which can only deliver finite power okay so and also we discuss source transformation theorem wherein a voltage source in resistor in series can be converted to a current source and resistance in parallel of current sources value would be vx into vx by rs the value of the current source is vx by rs and a parallel resistance of rs which is same as the thevenin resistance for this voltage source okay uh, see uh, guys here I am already assuming that you have done you have already gone through your basic electrical sciences ok yeah so similarly you can convert a current source and resistance in parallel to a voltage source and resistance in series so it is called source transformation theorem so let me just quickly quickly uh, go over a problem just to find applications of source transformation so consider you have uh, n voltage sources ok of value V1 R1 R2 till V n R n it is connected to a single load of val load resistance value R n ok. Now I am imposing another condition that ok uh, what is the sorry uh, what is the maximum power that you can deliver to the load R l that is the question ok as you vary the value of R l you should find out what is the maximum power that can be delivered to R l as R l is varied from 0 to infinity. Now to solve this problem I will represent this entire section shown in the dotted region as a single voltage source and current source we know that you know you have a linear circuit elements you can represent them using a Thevenin equivalent. So to convert to do that so it, the first easier way is I will represent every voltage source by a current source and resistor in parallel ok. So we know the between these two terminals I can represent it as a current source of value V1 by R1 and a resistance of value R1. So similarly the direction of current uh, should ensure that this node is see you should understand that this node is positive this is positive so this is also positive compared to this node so therefore the direction of current should be in this direction so that it will ensure that this node is at positive voltage ok. So that this the current source second current source value is V2 by R2 and you have R2 resistance and you put many of them in parallel and you have finally IN which is actually VN by RN and a resistance of RN. Now why did I convert it to current source because when current sources are in parallel it is very easy to add them ok. So that is why whenever you want to solve parallel circuit problems you can convert voltage sources to current sources. Now in this case it is simply addition I will represent this entire thing as a single current source of value summed over V i upon R i where i goes from 1 to n. Now this is connected to an equivalent resistance R t whose value is R 1 parallel R 2 parallel 
R n. Okay. Now this will be after this I can simply convert this to an equivalent voltage source by simply multiplying this current with the voltage. So it will become R t into summed over i equals 1 to n v i by r i and uh, this is r r t is here which is r 1 uh, r 1 parallel r 2 till r n. Now let me impose another condition that all the source resistances are equal r 1 equals r 2 till r n all the source resistance are resistances are equal in that case the voltage source simply reduces to it simply reduces to summed over i equals 1 to n v i ok. Now, you should know what should be the value of R t your value of R t will be R by n I am assuming all the resistors value equals R. So, it will become R by n you know when you have many resistors identical resistance in parallel you have n of them in parallel you will get R by n. So, again this is a very simple rule um, whenever you put resistors in series the max the value of the resistance in series will be greater than the maximum value of the resistance. Similarly, when you put resistors in parallel, the final value of the resistance will be lower than the smallest value in the parallel resistors. Okay, this is a general rule which simply follows from the geometry, sorry, uh, arithmetic and uh, the arithmetic progression. One of them follows, sorry, uh, it's it's direct direct summation. Uh, uh, it's a direct summation, whereas the parallel resistance is actually inverted value summation summation of the inverted values. So it follows from that. Okay, and I am putting a constraint so R t becomes R by n. Now, this is connected to a load resistance R l. Okay. Now, if you look at this equation this is actually 1 by n I missed a factor because R is R by n. So, when I multiply R by n and by R here you get 1 by n. So, if you look at this expression this is the average value of all the voltage sources 1 by n summed over I equals 1 to n V i. So, I have I could generate a summed average of all the voltage sources if provided I assume they have connected them with equal source resistances then I generate a summed average value of all the existing resistors of all the available uh, res uh, voltage sources ok. Now, in this case let me put another condition that all the voltages are also equal V i equals V j. So, then this voltage would simply uh, equals V x then this would reduce to simple simply this would reduce to a value V x and R by n connected to R l. Now, the maximum power transferred you know that we, we find it from V x square by 4 R s which would be R by n this is a function of as I keep varying R l you find the maximum power delivered this would be n into V x square by 4 R. So, now if I if I assume a single voltage source of value V x and R uh, the maximum power delivered is given by this term. Now, by putting n of them in parallel I have actually increased the power delivered by n times ok. The open circuit voltage remains the same, but short circuit current decreases by a factor of n. Now, we just solve this problem in a very simple way by applying source transformation theorem that is it. So, similarly whenever you have current sources more and more current sources in series it is very easy to solve them by converting them to voltage sources ok because voltages add in series current sources add in parallel. So, source transformation can be applied in both the cases in in yeah in both these cases to simplify the problems ok yeah. So, with this I complete the basics of finite power sources and uh, source transformation and power transfer theorems. Now, we will go into uh, resistors and resistor circuits ok. So, again as I have already discussed a resistor is a one to one circuit element wherein for every uh, uh, if the voltage is fixed the current is also fixed there is a one to one mapping and the slope of this line is given by 1 by r and v equals i r is what we call Ohm's law ok. And uh, most in fact resistors are very useful for understanding they are you find lot of applications in amplifiers. So, those circuits are not linear on the large signal meaning they are not linear from the entire range of the voltage, but they would be linear locally. So, then that is how when you analyze amplifiers you just locally linearize them at a single operating point and then uh, approximate it to a resistor for small variations in the voltage. Uh, so, understanding resistors is very useful from that point of view ok. So, one of the things that we will be normally finding in resistors is finding equivalent resistance ok equivalent resistance. So, if you have a circuit element 
consisting of resistors, voltage sources, dependent and independent voltage sources, uh, we can actually apply a voltage source Vt and measure the current IT. Then the ratio of Vt by IT will give tell me the equivalent resistance between these two terminals. So, you have a circuit which is comprising of resistors, voltage sources, current sources and both dependent and independent current sources and voltage sources. Then the ratio of Vt upon IT is what we call equivalent resistance. Okay. So, let me just find equivalent resistance for some circuits and we will also quickly go over uh, finding for some more complex circuits using some simple circuit techniques. So, if I ask you to, if I show you a circuit like this, and ask you to find the equivalent resistance, you would normally apply, I am asking you to find the equivalent resistance of this circuit you are applying a test voltage and trying to measure the test current. Okay. So, first let us make this problem simpler, assume that the resistance did not exist, then the circuit is reduced to this. Now, you know that these two resistors are in parallel a series and these two resistors are in series. So, the equivalent resistance is 2 R here and the equivalent resistance is 2 R and these both are again in parallel. So, the effective resistance is simply R. Okay. But now, the problem is we have a resistance which is actually connected between these two terminals. Now, how do you tell two resistors between these two terminals? How do you tell two resistors are in series? You have the current flowing in both has to be same. Okay, Th That is the condition for two resistors to be in series and for them to be in parallel, the voltage across the two resistors should be same. Two resistors should be exactly the same, then you, you can say that they both are in parallel. Okay, So, if I have two resistors, the voltage across them should be same not just the magnitude, but also you know they both should uh, they do th both the nodes should be shorted. Let me just put it that way. Both the nodes of the resistor or both the terminals of a resistor should be uh, shorted to shorted to each other. Okay. Now, when you have a resistor in between the only point you have is that these two resistors are no longer in series. The resistors previously we just added them in series, they are no longer in series. So, therefore, you have to find what is the current flowing through this. If I know this current then it makes my problem simpler, you know, I can somehow analyze it. So, what I will do is, uh, my aim now is to find what is the value of this current is. So, to find that current, again I will use Thevenin equivalent. So, let us first break this resistor and find the equivalent resistance, equivalent circuit between these two terminals. So, if this resistor, when it looks at this circuit, it appears as a single voltage source and a resistor in series. Okay. So, what is that voltage source? I am going to call it V equivalent and R equivalent between these two terminals. The terminals of interest are these two in the circuit. Okay. So, first to find that I have to first it is equivalent to finding Thevenin equivalent. So, first step what you do is you just open circuit the node and find the open circuit voltage. So, as soon as you open circuit this, open circuit this node the voltage at this point would be Vt by 2, they both are in series. Once you open the node, the resistance are in series and similarly the voltage here is also Vt by 2. I mean, I am assuming this is a common reference point which is ground. So, the voltage across these two terminals is 0, Okay, it is a voltage is 0. So, therefore, the Thevenin equivalent is 0 volts. Now, I am trying to find R equivalent, I am just, so to find R equivalent, what should I do? I just find, I will apply a test voltage here and measure the current flowing from this. So, to do that, first I have to short all the independent sources in the circuit. So, this, this part will be shorted, I will remove this part and ground this node to this. This has to be shorted, you know, because voltage source has to be made 0, current sources has to be made 0 when finding the equivalent resistances. So, I am going to short this and find the current flow. So, when, when I short this, the moment I short this, these two resistors are in parallel now, because this terminal and this terminal are in shared between the two. So, and similarly, these two are in parallel. So, you get an equivalent circuit like this. You have R by 2 and this is shorted here and you get R by 2 and we are looking into both, both the terminals here. See, I, I just assume this is ground. This is not actually a ground, but rather a reference point, common point. Okay. So, my point to say here is that there is no current flowing into the ground. I mean, the current is actually looping between the resistors here when I am looking at this point. So, now this current goes in this fashion. So, as I said, 
KCL has to be valid. So if a current is leaving this voltage source, same amount of current should enter the voltage source. Okay. So this resistor will supply back. Now these two resistors will be in series. The equivalent voltage Vt will now see a resistance of value R. Okay. So the equivalent resistance is R and now I am going to connect the resistance R across this. Now you know equivalent voltage is 0, so therefore the current through this will also be 0. Okay. So now you have a very interesting point here. I just showed that the resistor, when you have a resistive network like this and you apply a voltage source across this voltage source Vt across this, the current through this is 0 under certain conditions. Okay. Now here I have assumed all the resistors are same. Okay. Now you just imagine intuitively when will the current be 0. Okay. The current is 0 if the open circuit voltage across between the two terminals is 0. Now when will the open circuit voltage be 0 if the ratio of the two resistors meaning if the potential division let us assume this is R1 this is R2 this is R, R3 and R4 if the ratio of resistors meaning R2 by R1 plus R2 should be equal to R4 by R3 plus R4. Okay. So, I have assumed now initially in the previous problem and I have assumed all the resistors values are same. Okay. Now, I am just telling you that if I assume they are same the current is 0 it was very easy to show that now I am trying to generalize it by assuming the resistor values are different. Okay. I have R1, R2, R3 and R4. Now, I am trying to find the open circuit voltage and equating it to 0. Okay. So, this is if I, if, if I apply Vt here this should be equal to this then you get 0 volts across this. If I get 0 volts across this no matter what impedance you connect between these two terminals the current flowing through this will be 0. Okay. Because the voltage of open circuit voltage is 0. So, therefore, as I showed it in this circuit no matter what R equivalent is and the R, R you have connected here the current will be 0. So, by equating this I would get an equation of 1 by uh, R1 by R2. So, I will take it this side and this term to this side should be equal to 1 plus R3 by R4. So, you are left with the ratio of R1 by R2 should be equal to R3 by R4 or R2 by R1 should be equal to R4 by R1 any of that. So, if you satisfy this condition then the current flowing through this would be 0. Okay. So, this is an interesting aspect you uh, uh, the interesting point that you can realize from this circuit. Okay. So, this since the current through the resistor is 0 the voltage drop across the resistance is 0. So, now we now that we know using Thevenin resistance Thevenin equivalent we found that the current flowing through the resistance is 0. The current is 0 since it is a resistor for the voltage also has to be 0. So, I can just short these two points they are equipotential. So, no current is flowing between the two terminals between the two there is no current. So, I will short this now I will find the equivalent resistance now it becomes a simpler problem. So, this R and R comes in parallel. So, you get R by 2 in series with R by 2. So, the effective resistance between these two terminals is R R equivalent is R. Okay. So, there even you even though you added resistance in between the resistance did not matter is what I am trying to say through this problem. Okay. So, we will now solve some uh, slightly more complicated problems based on this concept what I just covered now. So, here in this circuit I have in this page I have shown two problems. Okay. Uh, both of them uh, comprise of resistive networks, but there is a certain degree of symmetry which, which can you use to solve this. Can you use it to solve this? Let me give a small hint here before I solve this problem. So, So, whenever you are given a resistive circuit try find try seeing whenever the resistive branches are dividing into one or more branches. Okay. Try seeing that if there is any symmetry in the circuit. So, for example, when you apply a voltage source V t across this you have a current I t flowing here as it enters it sees two paths this and this. When you are standing here when you look at it this circuit from this point it is a perfectly symmetric circuit around this point. Okay. So, I might I might just connect the voltage source in this fashion I, I can just connect it like this. When you look at it here it looks like a perfectly symmetric circuit around this point. So, therefore, 
the current should split equally if the current split equally you know the voltage at this point is same for both if the same current is going to flow through this the voltage is here across these two terminals will also be same if they are same then no current will flow through this i might as well short this these two become equipotential surfaces i might as well short these two terminals and analyze it okay so making such assumptions makes your analysis very very simple so i might as well extend let me extend the circuit little bit more so if i i i can add further resistors and another resistance here and resistor here and resistance here okay so in this entire network of circuits okay you can actually see that no current has to can actually flow through the currents when I mean the resistors here but because you know as the currents as the current enters uh, here it will split equally here as well and at every point the voltages would be same it's a perfectly symmetric circuit okay so therefore you can ignore the current through these resistors you might as well short these terminals and find the equivalent resistance it becomes much simpler when you make such assumptions okay so using such assumptions try solving this question shown here and the one that is shown in this problem okay so now i'll stop this uh, lecture at this point in the next uh, video i'll give the solutions for this and discuss more problems on circuits thank you